Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at a monocot leaf. Now there is nothing very different in case of a monocot leaf. There also things are almost similar. So let us see what are the differences here. Here also you have epidermis, so stomata on both abaxial and adaxial epidermis. So here mon in monocotyls generally the number of stomata is same on both the surfaces. Mesophyll is there, but here mesophyll is not differentiated into palisade and spongy parenchyma. There you have two separate and distinct layers, but here the distinction is not there. It is just one mesophyll layer which is present. So here you can see this entire thing is mesophyll. Just one mesophyll is present which consists of parenchyma cells. They are not differentiated at spongy or palisade. Vascular bundles are seen in veins and vein midrib. So let us suppose if this is a leaf. So basically there runs the vascular bundles. Surrounded by thick walled bundle sheath cells. Again, the bundle sheath cells are present here. So basically, monocot leaf is even simpler than a dicot leaf because there is no differentiation of the mesophyll layer. So it is like it is just like two layers of epidermis inside everywhere you have parenchyma cells and somewhere you have the vascular bundles in veins and midrib. That's all. So the structure of the monocot leaf is a lot simple than the dicot leaf. So let us have a quick comparison between the monocot leaf and the dicot leaf based on whatever we have studied so far. <clears throat> now talking about the monocot leaf, the stomata is equally distributed on both the upper and the lower surfaces. Whereas in case of a dicot leaf, the stomata is more on the lower surface. Okay, so that is one difference. Next is bulliform cells may be present on upper surface for monocot cells. Now this is a new term right bulliform cells I did not discuss about it. Now when we talk about monocot leaf for example grasses some of the adaxial epidermal cells that is the epidermal cells on the upper surface modify themselves into large empty colorless cells and these cells are called bulliform cells. So bulliform cells are nothing but modification of some adaxial cells that means the cells on the upper surface now why do they modify themselves into such cells because when when these cells absorb enough water the leaf surface is exposed Similarly, when they become flaccid, the leaves curl to minimize the water loss. So have you ever noticed the leaves of a grass? Sometimes you'll see that the leaves will curl because they do not have too much of water and therefore they cannot afford too much of water loss. So this curling or uh, this curling and exposure of the leaf surface takes place because of this bulliform cells. Because the bulliform cells basically absorb water and when they have enough water, the leaf surface is exposed. But this concept of bulliform cells are not present in dicot leaf. In dicot leaf, there is no such modification. Mesophyll is not at all differentiated in monocot leaf as we saw the entire mesophyll is just parenchyma cells whereas in case of a dicot leaf the mesophyll is well differentiated into a palisade and a spongy parenchyma. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, Find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.